So let's hop right on in. So first start off per usual, we're gonna go ahead and delete practically everything. So this is uh, your default cube, your light and your camera. Second thing, we're gonna set up some of our default settings to get us started. So turn on ambient occlusion, turn on bloom, turn on screen space refractions. This is all within the render properties tab. Then let's get something set up before we even get started, you know? Go over to the edit preferences. And you can see here, we have our preferences. Turn off this check mark so you can see everything. And look up import images as planes. I already have it activated, but you're gonna go ahead and click that. It's gonna allow us to bring in that background video later and get things up and running. All right, so you're set up and ready now. Let's dive straight on in. So first things first, we're gonna bring in our text. So I'm gonna just drop in some text, something that's similar to like a bit of a party fly, you know, some sort of dope ass event. So we're gonna go ahead and call it sound and flow. Maybe like, maybe think of it as like a yoga event or something like that. So once you have this, let's go into our little text properties. I like to align centered. Once I have that, I close that. Font, let's pick a quick font. Um, personally, if you want to find some display fonts, I'll go ahead and link something in the description below. Uh, I like to use Behance. And then from there, there's a lot of free display fonts that a lot of up and coming designers are using. So I'm going to go ahead and use Thunder and credit the designer below. I'm going to grab something not too bold, but something that's going to give us a little bit of thickness, you know? So we got sound and flow. So from here, I'm going to press R to rotate and press X on nine degrees. If you want to do it specific, if you want to do it in a different way, I can show you. Essentially, if you press N, open up transform zero X 90, if you want to rotate it 90 run the Y all depends on you. Now from here, we're going to want to extrude the text a little bit. So go over to your geometry and I like to hold shift and then just pull it out just, just a little bit. I think this is good enough for me. I don't know. It may be good enough for you, but it's good enough for me. Or you know what I'm saying. So now that we have our text, let's go ahead and bring in a camera. So front, bring in the camera. Let's move the camera on the Y axis back a little bit. Move it up a little tad bit. Now we're gonna go ahead and split our viewport. So just right click over there, then hold tilde. Camera, move this up a little bit. I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna set this up for like a bit of like an Instagram party flyer, you know, something where if you're like, oh man, I really wanna go to yoga this weekend. So the Instagram dimensions, I believe, are 1080 by 1350 for more of like a portrait kind of view. Now you can kind of see here, this is what we're playing with. And you're probably wondering, okay, Micah, like, how do I know what's centered and what isn't? Go ahead and click your camera properties, go over to viewport display, turn on your composition guides. So I like to turn on thirds and centered. And then we can turn off, nah, let's do thirds. Now go ahead and um, let's not worry about depth of field for right now. Now you can kind of see we have something going on here. So we're just playing with the size. We want to give it some space. I think this is a good enough size for our text. Cool. So here we are. Now, listen, listen closely. We're gonna get into the interesting step. This is how we're gonna twist the shape. And uh, you probably could use this later on for any object. It really depends, but this will definitely work. So let's go ahead and do Shift A. Let's bring in a lattice. And we wanna make sure that lattice is essentially surrounding, or we're making sure that lattice is the container for our text here. So press S and X, move it on the X axis. I'm oh, sorry, my camera's. I want to make sure this is looking good. Let's make it, bring it down a little bit. Move it on the Y axis, just a tad bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think this is good enough. You just want to make sure it's inside that container. I up my resolution. You're going to get a lot of mesh going on here by eight each one. 
it's really up to you. Essentially what this will do is when you start to displace and twist things, the more numbers you have, the cleaner of a twist, the less or chonky, that kind of stuff. So what we have here is our lattice. I'm gonna call it twist controller just to help out. Now we're gonna go ahead and go back to our text. Within our text, we're gonna drop in a lattice modifier and we're gonna assign that twist controller as the lattice modifier. Now let's go back to our twist controller, click simple deform. Now, if you wanna see it in action, Go ahead and click this little show overlay thing and then if you move it on the x-axis you can now see we have a bit of some twisty action here some nice twisty stuff so let's make it zero for right now <clears throat> let's turn back on our overlays just so we can see what's going on so the animation we want to have two of these bad boys but let's go ahead and animate one to get us started then we're going to duplicate so to animate it you're going to go ahead and we're going to parent them. And the reason why is because when you start rotating the text, you get this kind of kind of effect. I think a lot of it has to do with the origin, but for now, let's just go ahead and keep things clean. So select twist control and select text, control P, parent to object. Now what you'll see here is when you rotate it, Boom, we're centered origin. So now everything's gonna be moving on the same origin. Cool. What I would like to do now is let's go ahead and chop. Hmm. I'm gonna show you a little bit of trick. So let's go ahead and create a little animation of it rotating. So insert a single keyframe on the X. We can make it around a hundred frames. Actually, hmm, this is a fun one for sure. Let's cut it down by half 125. What about 55? I mean, oops, sorry. 125 to 360. This way, we get a full on rotation loop. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to play around with that twisting. So, our simple deform keyframe again on zero. And you're gonna answer it one in like 55. So it's just kind of like, okay, what I like to do, let's save this overlay. So we don't, we don't wanna twist too much. You twist too much, you can see with certain type boundaries, you're gonna get a bit of an issue with some gnarly like uh, geometry stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just twist it by like 100. And we're gonna add in zero, so it comes back. Now you click here, you can see it's twisted a little bit, but it's still twisting and rotating and animating and looping. So now that we have our first sound and flow animation, Let's set this back to 250. I'm gonna show you how to essentially repeat an animation from doing it once. So go over here. Also, you can skip this part if you want, um, and you just wanna go straight to the composition, and I'll set that up for you. So what you're gonna do here is do a nice little horizontal split. Just drag this up a little bit more. And let's open up our graph editor, zoom out a tad bit and let's go over here select our angle press n modifiers cycle when you cycle it you can see so our animation only goes up to 200 125 but it's going to go ahead and continue right now it's not fully doing it because we just did it for one value we need to do it for our x value as well add the cycles and run it back As you can see, it's looping. Perfect. Nice. So what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna go ahead and let's open up 
our overlays again. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's go material preview. I actually we'll leave that one. Let's click this tune it, tune it. Oh, I need to see my my things. Let's go ahead and just oops. You run into a bit of an issue with the duplication sometimes because it's like the twist controller and the text have to be selected when they're parented. I haven't really figured that one out, but just go ahead and select both. You can just drag your mouse over it and then control them. You want to get it like nice and centered. Just go like this. You can kind of see. I like it, but I want to bring it even closer. So just make sure. What you could do is disable one of them from being clicked. Oopsie daisy. Okay. One. Another tool tip. Make sure you um, label your things correctly. I like to bring them close. Because then you get this like kind of neat overlay effect. I also want it to be centered. So let's jump back in, my friends. Look at this. Right about there is centered. Just like that, we have the animation and positioning complete. Now we need to mess with materials and just setting up for the render. So I like to go ahead from here, uh, text, rotation, make sure you save your stuff, tutorial. Okay, fun part. Now let's go ahead and just, oopsie daisy. Let's just join these two areas bring it back to what we have. We're not really doing too much animation at this point. What we're gonna do here is let's bring in our video. Now, if you're wondering where to get the video at, I'm gonna go ahead and link this site called Pexels. It's a free stock place, I'm not sponsored. Do not make money like that on YouTube yet. Um, and you can go ahead and choose anything. Things that match the theme of the way that you want your text to be presented and we can play with it and then use some of that light from the video to affect the text as well within the reflection, which is super awesome. So once you find your video, I'm gonna press Shift A, go to Image, Images and pla as Planes, click Import Images as Planes, and you'll see that your video is kind of here. So do Material Preview before we bring in everything. And you scale it up, and then you click Play. You can see now that video is playing in the background. It's not gonna loop, but I, what I suggest if you're using this as like an actual flower or something like that, maybe up the amount of frames and make it a little bit longer, maybe like six seconds or something, something where people won't really notice that loop. If they're on Instagram, they're probably scrolling, swiping by, looking for the info or anything like that. When you're previewing this now, you're gonna get a little bit of frame lag here and there, and it's not gonna look as smooth, but trust me, once we're over and done, things will look a little bit better. Cool. So at this point, we're gonna play around with materials. So let's go ahead and open up our shader editor. Let's select our text. Okay, material, I'm gonna call it text material. Or Reminder, we're playing around Eevee. You can do this in cycles if you want. I'm gonna do it in Eevee to make it easy on everyone and everyone's computer. Because I learned Blender on my Mac to start, and now I have a PC, but still gotta watch out for everyone that's not rocking those heavy NVIDIA graphics cards. So anyways, let's go to a material preview. Let's keep it like that. I like to up the metallic, turn down the roughness a little bit. To be rendered. All right. Let's bring in one thing real quick. I'm gonna bring in an HDRI. Essentially, where you get HDRIs from is this place called. It used to be called HDRI Haven, but I think it has a new name, Polyhaven. 
If you're not familiar with this, essentially what this is, is there's these image files and what it'll do is really help you out with lighting. Um, it'll cover a lot of that hard work and you essentially want to pick something that looks similar to your video. I already have something, so I'm going to go ahead and just bring in an environmental texture. Open. Put your little trusty dusty. Got too many folders, my friends. ACRI, I'm going to bring in do do do. Kira Dawn 1. I think it looks cool. You can see here, now we have a bit more of this playful animation already. It is going to affect your video, so you want to make sure it's close to it because you don't want your video to be too, uh, like, killed out, I guess is the word I would use. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get a little bit cleaner with our stuff. So. Bring down the rough and this. You can get it really far down. I personally like to keep it a little bit. Just so you don't get too much crazy reflection going on here. And then within that video, click the little plane, connect your video MP4 to the emissions. You can up the emission strength a little bit. And what that'll do is essentially make it affect your text. Okay, so now we have our animation, we have our text, we have our environment. The second to last thing for render settings, we're gonna go ahead and hop into compositing, click use nodes, bring in a viewer node, open up a reroute, shift A, bring in lens distortion, boom, Bring it into our viewer. Oops. Bring it into our viewer. Okay. What you want to do is well, let's just bring in a glare as well. Okay. Render out a single image just to get it started. Okay. Cool. I like to bring in my dispersion just a tad bit. I do this practically with like everything. Jitter gives you this nice noise kind of look kind of cool and then what you also are going to want to do is let's pick a frame and an image is our animation going through okay there we go you want to you want to get a frame where it's like kind of spinning so you can see that reflection you're going to want to go ahead and up your threshold on the glare. What this glare does, it brings in this little like shiny, sparkly kind of effect. And depending on the threshold is the, think of like, if I have light stronger than one, essentially you're gonna have all this crazy glare and it's gonna look like a Barbie's commercial and you don't want that. If you have the threshold around like seven or 10, it's gotta be really bright, but at those moments, it's it's gotta be really bright to come through. So be chilling from there. Um, I like to bring that in. And from there, honestly, we pretty much have our animation. So for those that are still kind of learning, come over here to the render output properties. You're gonna go ahead and a little cheat code that I know is you're gonna name it. So I'm gonna call it uh, flyer text animation and I put the dot mp4 just to save me time do mp ff mpeg video container mpeg4 I'm gonna do mine and perpetually lossless because I'm gonna use this for uh, a bit of YouTube as well save it and then render region and click render animation and from there your computer is gonna start working so Wishing you luck. Uh, thanks again for dropping on by. Um, feel free to join the Discord or apply to join the Discord. And yeah, I really appreciate everyone that drops by on a week to week basis. I am a bit of like a new YouTube channel and 
every bit of support in the comments really go far. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.